Hollywood has a huge remake problem. This is an increasingly common debate amongst many film and TV peers to like, especially over the last couple of years. Discussing the implicit laziness that may be rocketing out of Hollywood recently, seen by how original tales are made far and few in between nowadays, while remakes, sequels, reimaginings, and universes are seemingly the heroes of modern media. I've talked about this topic before, such as in my Note video and my Top Gun Maverick video, but never fully in depth because the debate just never really piqued my interest. However, the sentiment changed for me for quite a weird reason too. You see, in my last video, I talked about the film 2012 of all things. The marketed disaster movies to end all disaster movies that came out in 2009, about the predicted end of the world in the year 2012, and it wasn't the best, I'll just keep it honest. But one thing I did find myself saying after watching this travesty is, hey, at least it's original. Now, while that may seem minuscule at first glance, this was my turning point as it dawned upon me that, wait, maybe I am underestimating this argument because I'm subconsciously giving points for basic originality to a movie who also couldn't build a character if their life depended on it. I, I know, it's a pretty dumb string of logic, but it did propose this eye-opening question to me as someone with this ever-growing passion towards the film industry. Have I been desensitized to the limitations of Hollywood? Like, have I just accepted that originality is simply a thing of the past and that the current trend is constantly building on top of previous work and then that string of thinking leads me to say oh am i just overreacting because original pieces are still out there and are still making waves i mean everything everywhere all at once was just cleaning house up at the oscars like it was nothing this back and forth internal dilemma is the basis of the entire argument with both sides providing very convincing stances however if you go through both opposing points one side just starts making a lot more sense than the other now, sequels and remakes in themselves are quite an interesting concept because they carry an inherent sense of security that original films just don't on many levels. They have a direct comparable source to see what works and what doesn't work for their franchise. They are seen as less of a risk, meaning that funds may be allocated on the higher end instead of the lower end for a movie's specific spending range. And in many cases, they have one of the strongest forms of marketing that a franchise could ever have and that's nostalgia. Anyone that's a fan of anything knows just how powerful of a tool nostalgia can be, as it's linking someone's thoughts to not just the project itself, but the joyous feeling associated with the particular time period. It's why shows that should have died out years ago are still pushing through, and why projects that are objectively bad are still promoted as if they're sacred law. It's just flat out way easier to resell a world or experience the viewer already knows rather than selling them on something entirely new. So the incentive is there if companies were of the mindset to just pump out recycled content and call it a Today. But the thing about relying almost purely on remakes and sequels is the fact that you're building an implied competition with the original. And if it's not meeting some already unreal public expectations, given how most are blinded by the original's quality due to nostalgia, people will just be way more pissed if the remake is bad than if it was just an original movie and it was bad in itself. This just leaves a product that is either a nostalgic bait mess or never properly given an acknowledgement because it's just not the original. It's why a good majority of remix ideas such as Space Jam and New Legacy, The Matrix, Resurrection, and do little are seemingly kicked around more than your average bad movie. This then becomes a conversation of if you think a company is willing to revive your product purely out of profit, even if it is destined to not be well received like 90% of the time. And well, I'll just put it like this. We were blocked from getting an absolutely insane sequel trilogy from Star Wars because a certain company didn't want a black lead scaring away the overseas market. So eh. Corporate greed wouldn't be the craziest assumption in the world. You can't deny though that when these companies do fold and make these sequels and remakes, they do produce some pretty high earning products. Just look back at 2022, where every movie in the top 10 highest earning films were either a sequel or a remake. Go back another year and you have 7 out of the 10 highest earning films either being a sequel or a remake. Although you can get even more technical here as one of the original films seen in 2021 would later come out with a sequel seen in 2022. Another one of the original releases in the top 10 in 2021 was Shang-Chi, which is obviously a part of the grander Marvel Cinematic Universe. One could make the argument that reinterpreted plot lines and sequel films have been a staple for as long as film has been a thing, so to chalk up all the remake backing as being a modern trend is pretty disingenuous. And yeah, they would be true. But to an extent, yes, the first sequel film does date back all the way to 1916, not to mention the hundreds of iconic franchises popping up and dominating box offices before the 2010s were even a thing. Everything from Harry Potter, Star Wars, Fast and Furious, Rocky, The Lord of the Rings, to James Bond. So to form this narrative as if sequels and remakes just suddenly became a Hollywood staple in recent years, yeah, 
That would be pretty disingenuous. The thing is though, it's never been about the actual continued content itself. The problem here actually is the massive influx in quote unquote recycled content in modern times. People aren't upset at the remakes and sequels themselves, but rather the increased quantity of those projects being produced for the big screen, to the point that it seems like original pieces aren't even given the light of day. Reddit user Spicer2 made an extremely well-made chart showing the proportion of original films versus sequels and remakes for the top 50 highest grossing films throughout the years. Start starting in 1978 and ending it in 2019. It shows a clear correlation of the decrease in attention shown to original films in specifically modern times, with it staying relatively consistent until the 2000s. This then turns into extreme growth for remakes and sequels, spanning from mid to late 2010s. Now with this graph, a couple of interesting claims can be made. You have the obvious in that original films just aren't the box office powerhouses they once were. Then you have the fact that they have only relatively recently become the minority amongst the group. And lastly, which is much more intriguing, is that this is the proportion of movies amongst the top 50 highest grossing movies along the years, meaning that these are movies that people are actively paying to go see. And this can produce two vastly different interpretations depending on how you look at it. On one side, you have the idea that original content is just not promoted or given the same urgency and budget as the sequel or remake franchise. I mean, like I mentioned before, they do stand a better chance at recuperating an audience than an original, so why not capitalize on an already established property? which would simultaneously involve a little bit less creativity while also having a higher promotional gains. I mean, it does get rid of a lot of hassles, and this is a business at the end of the day. On the other side of the coin though, being a much more introspective interpretation, maybe the reason for the lack of originality in modern times is because of us. Maybe the focus straying away from the original products could be the effect and not necessarily the cause. We have talked multiple times about corporations and investors prioritizing the avenue that provides the bigger bucks instead of caring for more abstract morals such as artistic integrity to put it lightly. So maybe they're just going with what the people seemingly want now and that just so happens to be these previously established worlds that are familiar. This much modern sequel pushing is just another film trend for the public to eat up such as disaster movies or fanfic vampires. Like in real life I actually know several people who pretty much only go out to theaters if a Marvel movie is playing, and that's pretty much it. And with corporate competition increasing by the day, especially with the rise of financial gold mines such as streaming platforms, heavy catering towards this trend is going to be seen. Like say I'm Netflix, and I see that I'm losing content after content from other companies looking to take back their IPs and then release it themselves on their own streaming platforms. If I see this, I'm going to start building around the products I know already work and that I own, such as Stranger Things or even projects that don't need a sequel such as Squid Games because I want to maintain my grip as much as possible on the viewers that are still here. The truth of the matter is that this is more of a complex perpetual situation with the viewers lack of experimenting being at fault as well as Hollywood's lack of creativity due to greed. They both play into each other and create this film environment that is just so odd that leads to decisions like Disney thinking it's alright to turn every animated property into a live action remake, which is a whole nother video in itself. But while all of this seems incredibly harmful for the film sphere, what really is the problem here? Just just think about it. The people are getting the continued or remade stories that they love, I mean they are obviously showing the support in the box office, and the companies themselves are getting the secured money that they are pushing this sort of content out for, possibly making them more willing to invest into original projects later on down the line now that they are secured financially. The people seemingly get what they want, franchises get what they want, and everyone ends up a bit more satisfied. Except this could hurt in the long run, badly, because it's not necessarily what modern media is now, but more of what modern media could turn into. You see, when you rest the fate of an art form, something that is supposed to be based on creativity, on something that is inherently not original, you come across quite a few issues. And yes, these examples may be a bit extreme on the surface, but they can paint a rough, realistic idea of what could be. Like for one, you are reaffirming this closed-minded attitude amongst fans when it comes to content available, so when the major built-up franchise such as MCU just stop being interesting, you're looking to face maybe some dips at the box office as this culture of sequels only is playing back onto you. People will then probably give in to online alternatives for their attention as they provide entertainment at a lower time risk than committing to a whole other project. As for the original project supporters out there, you can already see that growing resentment towards platforms such as Disney Plus and HBO Max for their artistically limiting decision. And in general, it's just an unfortunate sight to see such an expressive medium be reduced to such a simplistic form for the sake of temporary profit. So when it comes to if Hollywood has a remake problem, yes, they do. And it could turn on them 
in the future. Now, some of the stuff I said in this video is pretty generalized. Like, I know certain sequels and remakes are good quality pieces that are absolutely worth the watch over some original content, but I had to be so general to break down such an open-ended and exhausting debate, but I still genuinely did try to stay as consistent with my logic and as close to the facts as I possibly could to produce an answer that would be as honest to the prompt at hand. The film has lasted for over a hundred years and it will probably last a hundred more. However, it's great to be honest with ourselves if we are able to predict a possible dark spot. If you guys made it this far, I would ask if you guys please like and subscribe to the channel. It only takes two seconds, but it would mean the world to me. Peace.